this one is uh, it was a simpler problem because we're actually going to tie a bunch of different elements together. Sometimes we do these sessions and we kind of take a deep dive into one feature. This time we're going to take a look at three different features that we're going to put together and combine that to, to make this, uh, you know, using search for reports. So uh, as always, I like to start off with just a little bit of an explanation as to what we're doing. Uh, so our core concept for today is we're going to looking at a tool that's accessible to any user that can search and locate information, which can then be exported as a spreadsheet. So that's the key function to it. And here's the features we're going to be using for that. Our first one is search. So uh, this function of using a simple or an advanced search to locate documents or records or archived materials or whatever is appropriate for your search. And then we're going to search for those using the text or the metadata for the documents. But primarily, I would suggest you would probably want to rely on metadata for finding your results. Not that uh, the text isn't important, but the metadata is probably the one to lean on a bit more heavily. And we'll see why that is later on. The second function is we're going to use our custom views. You may remember this from a previous one where we make custom views onto the screen. That's going to be really essential for those search results to make sure we're seeing the information in the way that makes the most sense. So we're going to tie those two elements together. On top of that, we're also going to look at saved searches because we want the ability to recall this later on. It's often easier to save a search and then modify it in the future than it is to start from scratch every time. So why don't we take advantage of the save search function to bring that in? And then finally, export. And there's two different levels of export we're going to look at. I'm mainly going to talk about making lists from this, making a report. But it is possible, if, you, if you're the correct user, to be able to export all of the documents at the same time. So you can actually use this tool for more than one function. Now it's worth pointing out there are a couple of small limitations to this. The first one is that this needs the file hold desktop application to export the document as a CSV. So we can't do this through the web client uh, or the anonymous portal. So this is only a function that's available to people who are using the desktop application in full. You can still run searches using the web client. You can still do searches using the anonymous portal but it's only the FDA that has that export as a CSV function. That's really what lets you capture that report information. It's also worth pointing out that users can only search for documents that they have access to. And remember, uh, and those of you done training sessions with me know you've heard it a thousand times. I keep saying it over and over for folks. Access is controlled by the schema, cabinet, and folder. So if you're asking someone to do a search for documents and they're not coming up with what you suspect is a complete list, chances are they may not have access to it. So therefore, the higher the level of access is, the more complete your search results are going to be. And I want to put that out there because I'm an administrator in my file hold, and so I can use that as uh, the uh, impetus for my searches. All right, so with that in mind, we're going to hop in now and take a look at reports uh, in a live demo. So we're going to hop in and look at our reports. So we're going to start off by going into our desktop application for file hold. Here it is. We're see that I'm logged in up here as Chris. I was doing some workflows earlier so I can minimize that. And we're going to start up here with our search functions. We're going to start with search there in the middle. Let me just minimize some of my other windows here because I don't need to see all of that. So we're just in search. We don't know what we're looking for at this point, where it's going to live in the library. We just have some use cases for it. So let's say that we're going to start off by saying, I need to look for a contract. That's going to be our use case for today. Now, I could type a value into here for the contract. But in this case, I know it's a document type that I'm looking for as a contract. So it makes sense for me to start with an advanced search. So we just click on the advanced, it takes us over to here. Now I can open up my first drop down menu and I can choose the document type that makes the most sense. And I'm going to choose my contract document type and select. And now I'm ready to execute a search for my contract. So here's all of the contracts that I have in the system. I have 28 contracts. Now, if this was all I was looking for, somebody says, give me a list of all the contracts in the system. I am now ready to capture this information and send it out. So to do that, again, using the desktop app, we're just going to bring our mouse over top to the gray bar over here. We're going to right click onto the uh, into there, just at the, the, uh, the headers for the columns, and we can get this context menu. So we've got group by, which lets me do clustering onto these if I wanted to. I could add or remove columns if I wanted to change my view onto this. I could export the grids to CSV, and that's the one that I want. So if I choose to export the grids to CSV, I can choose where this is going to be. So let's go to our desktop, and we're going to call this demo1, and we're going to save that. And now I can open up my desktop, and I should have... Now, you know what? I'm just going to go to my list here. It's easier for me to find desktop, demo1, double-click. And that opens up with Excel. Let's expand Excel. There we go. And here's my list brought over to there. So it's exactly what I had on screen before. 
Let's just uh, get these to the same size. So we're seeing our document name, location, schema, linked version, status, and all that information has now been exported. So that's really all there is to exporting a report. And no, that's not gonna end our session for today. There's a lot more detail I'm gonna get into this. But what I wanna show you here is, that's all it takes to do this export. I don't need high level usage. I just need to execute a search, right click on the bar up top here, and then choose export grid to CSV. And then I can capture those results anytime I want to. So very simple to bring that information out uh, for someone else to be able to use. Now, there's two different actions we can do first. And the uh, first thing is I can look at fine tuning my advanced search. There's a couple of broad things that are always worth double checking them. I can include the archive, I can include old document versions, I can use old historic metadata fields, all things that I can bring into my search. And you see that I've got that saved into my settings over here. So every time I run my search, I'm automatically capturing that. If I didn't want those, I could deselect those and then hit the save sign over here. And then when I save that, the search settings have been saved. That doesn't save the values up in here. That simply saves my checkbox state down there. So now if I click on search and I go to advanced, I'm automatically have those deselected. So now when I look for information, I'm only finding the things I want. Second comment is I'm not likely to look for one document type. I'm probably looking for information about those documents. Now that comes in two varieties. And those of you done uh, who've looked at search with me before may remember this. There are two classes of metadata that file hold can, uh, can contain. So if I open up my dropdown over here, everything that's above this line, all of these uh, columns up here, all of these uh, fields, these are all administrative metadata you don't directly change them. So for example, if I was looking for documents that are owned by somebody else, I can use that and then I can choose Andy out of the list and say, show me all contracts owned by Andy. Now I can reassign those documents to another user, but I can't go to these documents and just manually change the ownership. I have to use the change ownership function to do that. That's very different than document metadata. With document metadata, so let's open up another field here for myself. I can grab this and I can say, I'm looking for all contracts where the, um, let's use the matter number for this is, uh, let's just choose uh, 8675309 and search. And now we're showing all contracts owned by Andy that have a matter number of 8675309. And I can find my document based on that. So we're using a, so when we look at our drop down here, everything that's above this line, administrative metadata, this is information that's about the document, but uh, you know things that you can influence, but really it's information that file hold is controlling. Everything below this line, this is your descriptive metadata. This is what you would normally tag a document with. This is what you can directly influence. So the, uh, the metadata is the, easy, is the more, you know, I'd say the more accurate way to find information onto a document. It's usually how you're focusing and controlling your documents. So if I wanted to, I could take a look at the metadata for any of these by opening up my metadata panel on the side and I can see the details. Now we saw when I did my export before, I'm using this fairly neutral view over here, but let's say instead, what I really wanted to be able to do was capture this information uh, for that's in the metadata fields within my screen over here. And that's a custom view. Now there's two different ways to get into a view. The first way is again, I can right click on the bar over here. And then when the window pops up, I can select the add or remove columns and I can go to reorder columns. And then this window is gonna pop up for my global view preferences preloaded to search results. The second way to get to that is to go up to file, preferences and settings, view preferences, and then choose the area, which in this case is search results. So we can scroll down on our list and now we can make a new view. So we're gonna add a view for ourselves. We're gonna call it contract. So I've got the type of document in mind. So when I'm looking for contract information, what fields are the most important? By the way, before I went into this mode, the first thing I did was I selected a document and opened up the metadata so I can see the available metadata fields listed down the side. And that's gonna make my life a lot easier when I try to populate the information against the document. Great, so now I can say, I'm gonna make a view, we're gonna say okay. And now I can add fields to this and arrange the information as to what makes the most sense, specifically thinking about my export function that I'm doing here. What information would I like to see on an external sheet? So let's start from the top and work our way down. So the we'll, first one we'll choose is the contract type. So we just need to show down to our contract type field. 
There we are, contract type, and we're gonna add that field. That puts it at the bottom. So we're gonna move this up to a different position. We're gonna make this a second position. So document name, and then the contract type. Second field of information, we're gonna use the matter number. So we'll choose the matter number. Third field we're going to use is the contract and party name because that's an important piece of information. And again, once we add these in, we can shape these and put them in a different spot if we want to. If we have things on this, like if it's not important for me to know the approval status on this document, I could remove it uh, or I could uh, change any of those other fields. In this case, I'm gonna say I don't need to know uh, the uh, last modified date. That's not important for me for this document. I don't need to know uh, the relevance for this within the rankings, although it's automatically gonna put that onto there. So you see there's no X, that's because it's a search result. It automatically puts that information out there. So we've got uh, con uh, contract type, uh, matter number, and then we can choose any of the other fields onto this. So we know we want a uh, contract and party name. So we'll choose that from the dropdown, add the field, and then move this up to the fourth position. And essentially I can tailor this in the way that makes the most sense. Uh, so if I have things like the uh, perhaps the relevance and the location in the system aren't important, so I'm gonna push them to the end of my list so they're not interfering with my Excel document when I'm taking a look at it. I'm going to do the same thing with the relevance over here. Push those towards the back of it. Now that I've got uh, the information onto this that I want, maybe let's do one more here. Let's do the drafted by. And we'll make that number five in my list. If that's the way I want it, now the next thing I need to do is ask the question, how do I want these to be ordered? Uh, the simplest way to do this is to use the relevance. That's usually the default, but I can choose something else like the document name or the contract type or any of those types of fields of information. Uh, so in this case, let's use the matter number as our main thing. And then I'm going to group these by the type of document. So just by the uh, contract type so that they cluster together into those when I'm executing my view for this for my contracts. Again, just a visual tool for me, exports exactly the same. So we're gonna say okay to that. And we've now created our contract view. The view doesn't change over here because we're still in our default view. So I'm gonna choose contracts and we see our information here. Now I can close the metadata fields because the important information that I wanted to see is now available for me over here. And I can see that listed down. So now I can grab that information if I need to, who drafted it, internal reference numbers, contract matter numbers, anything that's important to me about this document is now displayed onto here. Now I can again do exactly what I've done before, which I can come up to my bar, I can right click onto there and I can do an export. Let's just do that, not because I think it's a particularly valuable list, but because I wanna show you what it looks like when I do that process. So again, we'll go over to our desktop and we're gonna do demo two and we'll save that and we'll open up our folder, go down to our bottom, there's our document and now it opens it up. And now, like I was saying, you can see all of your metadata fields export as part of the document. Now we're getting to a real report because there's information that I wanna capture onto these. I can open this up as a CSV. I can export this to another system in case you have something else that does analytics on CSVs. I have a lot more options now for my tools because I'm able to export the information exactly as I want it captured. All right, back over to file hold. So now we ask the question, I've run this search. What if I wanna run it again? What if there's a regular thing that I need to do? Well, we can save this as a save search. Now, in this case, you'll see that I've done this search and I've said, okay, I've run this search is only looking at my active library because I'm not including the archive and I'm not looking at uh, all document versions, only looking at current versions of documents. So let's tweak this to include the archive, include all document versions, and we'll even search using historic metadata values. And I'll run that search again, no results change. But now that I've done that, I can capture this as a saved search. So I'm gonna select save as save search. And now I can choose what I want this search to be called. So we're gonna call this um, contracts owned by, and who did I say for this? I said owned by Andy, right? I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm also going to make this a quick search. And the quick search condition I'm going to use is gonna be the contract matter number. So I'm gonna choose that over here. Now here's why that's relevant. If I now say okay to this, what happens is it bakes in, let's go to advanced, it'll bake in the contract, Andy, it'll remember us in contracts mode, and it will remember all of the, the uh, check boxes down here. But if we go back to this and I just click on contracts owned by Andy, this field is blank. It's ready for me to put information into it so I can now execute my search. So I can type in 8675309 and run my search. 
and there's my document. So it's easy enough to find the information I'm looking for, and now I can grab this and I can do my right click onto there and I can export this grid as a CSV for further analysis. So the idea here is that my search can be as focused or as broad as I need it to be in order for me to pull out my report. So let's say, for example, someone asked me, I'm looking for all information based on a particular purchase order number. So I can run my search and hit enter. And as soon as I do that, it'll put me back into a view and I can change that view. So go to our default view and now I can run my search and I can look for any of my documents that are associated with this. And I can then do my uh, export uh, if I need to from the right click onto there, because here's my list of documents related to PO 123456. Now, I also mentioned before that there's two different modes of export. So far, I've been talking about exporting lists. We can go further than that. If I grab my first document and then grab my last document, and if you have the right to do that, you can right click on the documents and you can send these to a local place. Like I could send these to my document tray or I could send these to uh, an export mode. And when I do that, it's gonna not only export the documents as a zip file, it's also gonna include the metadata that's associated with them. So if I need to grab all these documents, I can actually do an export for it. So again, this is something that not every user will have access to, but if you do have access, exporting it's the easiest way. But you'll also see there, there's some other functions. So for example, Maybe I've got a virtual folder over here and I want the uh, the output of my search to go into a virtual folder. So I can make myself a new virtual folder and we could call this the Jenny file. And then in the Jenny file, I can uh, run my search. So here I am in Jenny. We're gonna go back to our PO. We're gonna run our search. There's our search and we're going to grab all of our documents. And I'm just going to drag all of those and drop them into the Jenny virtual folder. Now that information is over there. And again, now that it's here, if I needed to, I could right click on the bar up top. Basically, anywhere where you're looking at file hold, I can export the grid information to a CSV. If I want to make a custom view over here, I can do that as well. So I could do that for folder contents. I can do that for search results. I can do that for anywhere that I want to in the system. The big advantage of the search function is I have a very specific set of document information that I'm looking for, and I can run my search be able to find that information for myself. And when I do that, it's going to save for me information like the checkboxes, like the contracts view, any of that information that I've built into it. So we're bringing these different elements together. We're using our advanced search to find information. We're using our save searches to recall that information later. We're using custom views, and then we're doing that export function either of the documents, if you need the documents themselves, or that view in order to capture the report as a CSV. So not a complicated thing for today. It's a pretty basic function, a couple of small details. First one is you'll notice that when I build a search for the first time, so I'm gonna go back into search and we're gonna go into advanced, you'll see that the save as save search button is grayed out. So the key thing to remember is that if you're looking for information on documents, you wanna make sure that, um, uh, that you have search results first before you save it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I go into this and I say, I'm looking for all documents that are contracts, and I'm looking for contracts that have a workflow status of approved. And we search, and here's our approved contracts that we currently have in the system. Now I've deliberately said in this case, do not include the archive and do not include all document versions. I only care about the current documents that are marked as approved. A more useful search for this might be ones that are pending approval and run the search and saying that nothing is pending approval, nothing's in the middle of a workflow. Do I have any that have been not submitted for approval, ones that are waiting for approval to run? Now there's a more useful search because it lets me say, okay, these are documents where approval hasn't been issued yet because they haven't gone through an approval cycle. This might be something I might need to know. So now you'll see that I've run the search, save as save search turns on. So I can click onto this and I can say, um, not submitted for approval contracts simple value into that and I say, okay, perfect. And I say, all right, I've got my save search. That's fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, but I want the view for this uh, to be in my default view because I don't want to see all that other information for it. Okay, perfect. All right, now I'm going to uh, do this view and I'm going to uh, save as save search, right? Now, even if I overwrite this and let's go ahead and overwrite this one and say, okay, I didn't rerun the search with that new view that I've put on it. 
So when I select my not submitted for approval contracts, it's going to keep me in the same view that I had from before because I haven't updated my view since I did the save as a save search. So if I say, change this to contracts and run my search, it's going to remember contracts. And now when I click on save as save search, not submitted for approval contracts, OK. And now when I select this again, it executes the search and it keeps contracts open. You'll see if I come back over here to my metadata only search, which was not saved with a view, it's going to pull up the information that I need. So let's go back to my inbox. Let's go back to my search. Let's change this to default so that we see we're in a different mode. It's not going to not going to change the results until I actually execute a search. So that's okay. Essentially, what I wanted to point out here is when you run a search, you want to make sure that you execute the search and then save it to make sure you're saving the state of that search. If you modify the search and don't rerun it, it's not going to save those changes to it. So small detail, but I always think it's worth pointing out. And the second thing to, to point out is this is a these kind of searches are perfect use case for common metadata fields. Common metadata fields are any metadata that's shared by more than one schema. And where you have metadata that can be shared by more than one schema, that's a really powerful way to find that information. Because I can say, for example, we saw before I was doing a PO number search. I can say I'm looking for bills of lading with a PO number of 123, or I'm looking for invoices with a PO number of 123, or I'm looking for packing slips that have a PO number of 123, or whatever value it is that I'm looking for. But in this case, I can say I'm looking for PO 123. I don't care what kind of document it is much more powerful often for capturing those documents for a search. So that in a nutshell is what we want to talk about today for uh, using the search function in order to produce reports.